tobacco-free life. My name is Ann Morgan. I'm the Executive Director at the North Country Healthy Heart Network in Saranac Lake. Today's program is presented as part of the Community Lecture Series, which is sponsored by the Foundation of CVPH. Before we get started, I'd like to thank members of the Planning Committee, which included representatives from the University of Vermont Health Network, CVPH, and Side Center. Uh, members also included the Champlain Valley Family Center for Drug Treatment and Use Services and the North Country Healthy Heart Network. I'd also like to, to thank today's presenters who you will meet very shortly. And I'd like to especially thank those of you who are here to learn more about how you love can become an ex. As you're listening today, you may have questions. Have questions. And those questions can be answered in one of three ways. You can enter your question into the chat box, which I believe is at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a little bubble that you can click on and you can enter your question into the chat box. Make sure that you um, address that question to everyone so that we are sure to, to get that question. You can also make a note of the question that you have and save it for some discussion, uh, which will be uh, taking place after the presentations. Um, the, the final way that you can ask your question would be to share your question in the survey that we will be posting in at the end of today's program in the chat box. So without any further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first speaker, Dr. Jan Deuce with the CVPH's Fitzpatrick Cancer Center. It's Dr. Deuce. Okay, thank you. All right. Well, hi, I'm Dr. Deuce. I'm one of the medical oncologists here at CVPH, and I appreciate the opportunity to spend some time talking about this important topic. Um, when the organizers asked me to, to speak, they gave me the suggestion of a title, It's Never Too Late to Quit. And I really think it's important to bring a, a positive attitude to this. So I thought it'd be better to change my title to There's Never Been a Better Time to Try. I've been doing this for a long time and I had the opportunity to, to, lock, to talk to lots of patients and families about smoking cessation and I hope I've learned a thing or two over the years. I know that this is hard, but I know that if you believe it's impossible, then it will be. I try not to ask people to dwell on the past. We can't change history, but we can learn from it to give direction going forward. And if, for my, you know, my, my perspective is, if the past has been harmful, don't repeat it. Be patient with yourself. Trying to quit and having a relapse isn't failure. Failing is not trying in the first place. I think you know, relapse is always an opportunity to learn what worked, what didn't work. And I think most studies looking at long-term successful tobacco-free individuals, it probably took them eight to 12 times to get it right. You have to be perseverant. So why is this an important topic? I mean, this may sound very simplistic, but when you come to see me because of a diagnosis of cancer, my goal for you is to give you the best possible treatment. I wanna give you the best possible chance for cure. I want you to have the best possible quality of life. And if we're not talking about cure, I want you to live for as long as we possibly can with the best life possible. I think for me as an oncologist, the easiest thing for me is talking about what I have to offer you. These are things like surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. And I've always found that if I have a medicine that I can offer you that has some benefit against your cancer, even if it's got side effects, most people are gonna be willing to sign up for that. What's always harder is if I ask for you to make some changes in your life in order to help fight the cancer. Usually this means I'm asking you to change a habit and we all know that changing habits are hard and tobacco is worse than a habit, it's deeply addictive. I think tobacco companies know that if they get a customer, they often have a customer for life. If you're fortunate enough to be meeting me because of a diagnosis of stage one lung cancer, I get excited. The earlier we catch lung cancer, the more likely we are to be able to cure it. But that being said, we're still gonna talk about difficult things. I'm gonna be talking to you about undergoing major surgery to remove that cancer and that surgery carries risk with it. If I told you that I have a medicine that could reduce your chance of having complications after that surgery by 30 to 50%, you'd be crazy not to take it. So that medicine turns out to be temporary smoking cessation. If you can be tobacco-free for six to eight weeks going into your curative intent lung cancer surgery, 
your odds of having major complications after surgery go down significantly. And that didn't even equate, you know, that wasn't long-term tobacco cessation. That being said, temporary is good, permanent is better. We know that if people were lucky enough to survive lung cancer once, unless they stop smoking, the risk of coming back and seeing me again is much higher than those who are able to stop smoking successfully. And you, you know, if you never want to tempt fate twice, let's put it that way. Maybe you're a patient who's seeing me for stage two or stage three lung cancer, where we're usually talking about the combination of chemotherapy and radiation to try to cure the cancer. Each one of those modalities have their own particular side effects. I'm a chemotherapy guy. Maybe there are some people in the, on the call who've been through it, but I make you weak and tired and run down and I mess up your immune system and radiation has its own baggage. There's always collateral damage to the normal parts of the lung as we try to hit the tumor. So if I could offer you a medicine that reduces your odds by about 30% of having a major complication during your lung cancer treatment, again, you'd sign up for that in a heartbeat. So it turns out that medication again is smoking cessation during treatment. Lots of studies have been done showing that people who have been tobacco free for a period of time, they get less pneumonia, they have less problems with lung inflammation from the radiation, fewer hospitalizations for complications. And to be honest, treatment actually tends to work better. Maybe you're not so fortunate. Maybe we're talking about a more advanced cancer where our goals are really prolongation of life rather than cure. My experience has always been, this has been the hardest group of people to reach to embrace the idea of tobacco cessation. There's often the mindset, well, the damage is already done, what good will it do to make a big change at this point in my life? What if I told you I had a treatment that could improve your quality of life during this time? What if it made treatments more likely to benefit you? What if it actually helped you live longer? It would be unethical for me not to talk to you about that particular treatment. You know, again, with chemotherapy, no problem. You're going to sign up for that. But again, that's smoking cessation. Loads of studies for patients with advanced cancer, everything gets better. Treatment works better. Toxicities are way, way, way reduced. Less time in the hospital and time, you know, the, our ability to treat the cancer is better and life tends to be longer. Who wouldn't want that? We spend a lot of time talking about lung cancer when we're talking about smoking cessation, but the benefits of smoking cessation pretty much extend to every cancer that you might come to see me for. Um, breast cancer, it's not typically felt to be a tobacco associated cancer, but if you're diagnosed with breast cancer, you are going to survive more often if you are a former or never smoker than somebody who actively smokes during the diagnosis. It seems to have an impact on our ability to cure the cancer. We also know that during follow-up after cancers that we do very well with, smokers tend to have other problems. They tend to, you know, they'll, there's a higher chance of dying of other causes simply during that time. So lots of studies support this observation, not just for breast cancer, but pretty much every cancer across the board. There's always an opportunity for you to help yourself. A big part of cancer treatment is doctors telling patients what to do. And I think it's always a big struggle. There's always this sort of sense of, I'm not in control of things. I look at smoking cessation as your opportunity to exert the control that you have over your illness. And I'm always immensely proud when patients can sort of take on the challenge of making meaningful changes in their lives while dealing with something as difficult as a cancer diagnosis. We also know that if there's one smoker in the household, there are likely others. And we know that if families make the effort to stop smoking together, they're more likely to be successful than if somebody does it in isolation. I've also been doing this long enough that I've had more than a few occasions where I've taken care of several generations of the same family for lung cancer. When my patients commit to stopping smoking during their cancer diagnosis, I think it really sets a tremendous example for the rest of the family. And I think if there's a son or a daughter who sees you fighting to kind of overcome this very difficult habit, maybe they're going to be inspired by that. Maybe they're going to put down the cigarettes as well too. And perhaps you prevented that person from ever having to see me in the first place. That's about the greatest gift that you can give to family is, is good health in the future. 
2020 has been a terrible year for most of us, but I think we've learned that we can change what we do and we can take on difficult things. I didn't even know what a Zoom meeting was in 2019, but we've quickly embraced this type of platform to allow us to spend time together and share knowledge virtually. This shows that we can do change. And I think New Yorkers are tough. We took our state, which was the worst place in the world for coronavirus, and we've become a national example for how to keep it under control. That shows our perseverance. Smoking cessation requires the ability to, or desire to change and strength. If anyone can do it, New Yorkers can. I think it also takes a team. You're gonna hear um, input from other members who can be a part of that team to help you along the way. And I think with that, I'll wrap up my part of the, my part of the talk. Great, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Deuce. That was great. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, really positive message. It, it, it really is never too late. And, um, and so with that, I'd like to start introducing, we have lots of resources. Um, both locally and um, regionally and throughout the state. So the next few presentations will be um, to talk with you a little bit about some of those services. So we're gonna start with Troy King. Troy is a tobacco treatment specialist with CVPH. And uh, Troy, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Dr. Deuce. Um, <clears throat> hello, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I am Troy King. I'm a CVPH medical home nurse, and I have been working with individuals to help them quit tobacco for about the past six years or so. Uh, first off, I'd just like to take a moment and acknowledge the strength and courage required to join us today and to even think about quitting tobacco. Uh, you know, given our current pandemic and holiday season, anxiety and stress is pretty much at an all time high for a lot of people. Being a former 14 year smoker, I understand the difficulties and struggles that need to be overcome in order to lead a tobacco free lifestyle and hopefully this presentation will help you to obtain that goal. Um, I know that many, if not all of us are aware of the most common options when it comes to quitting tobacco, um, such as gums, candies, snacks, <clears throat> along with the use of nicotine replacement products like uh, uh, patches, gums, lozenges, and certain medications, which will be discussed later on in the presentation. Um, I'd like to personally focus on the lesser known tips and tricks, starting with the use of the four Ds, which are the delay, deep breathe, drink water, and distract methods. Um, the first one is delay. This tactic is beneficial as it relies on increasing the time between experiencing a craving and the actual use of the tobacco product. Uh, typically, most tobacco users experience cravings at certain times throughout the day, such as first thing in the morning, after meals, before bed, um, after completing chores around the house as a type of reward. So the goal here is to gradually increase that delay time until the craving is no longer apparent. Um, you know, a couple of minutes each day, you do that for a couple of, of days, and then you increase it by a couple more minutes, you know, three or four days later. <clears throat> Next up is the deep breathing. Uh, this idea is, uh, or this intervention, is to take a few moments during the beginning of a craving where you can close your eyes, take a couple of deep breaths, you know, usually four deep breaths, in through your nose, out through your mouth, preferably in a calm, quiet environment. That, of course, is not always the case, but um, it's, it's time for you to determine or come up with an activity or a task that can be, form, be performed instead of using tobacco. Um, <clears throat> Drinking cold water or juice, uh, this one's pretty much self-explanatory, and it really just relies on the opportunity to keep your hands and your mouth busy, so as to curtail the cravings uh, with a flavorful or refreshing drink. Um, there are sugar-free options, you know, that one can use should you have to monitor your carb intake. Um, same goes with the snacks. Uh, on a personal note, this method actually worked for me in the past as I was a right-handed smoker, and I would drink my soda uh, in my left hand because that was a major trigger for me. Um, I wasn't a nurse yet at that time, so I wasn't aware of the benefits of running on coffee. Uh, now I do. So I decided to switch hands. And when I started to drink with my right hand instead of smoking with my right hand, I had absolutely no idea what to do um, with my left. You would think that I would just pick up the cigarette with my left hand and, you know, it would be common practice. I would get right into it but it actually felt really weird and it worked well in breaking the habit that was um, associated with drinking, um, that behavioral trigger, if you say. 
<clears throat> the next method is the distraction method. And this one is extremely beneficial. Uh, studies have shown that if you keep your hands, mind, or mouth busy, the longevity and the strength of a craving can be reduced dramatically. <clears throat> a good habit to get into and what I talk with my patients is start making a list of tasks that you can complete, which take about 15 minutes or less, um, you know, throughout the day, multiple tasks, cleaning the fridge, you know, even if it's just one section of the fridge, going for a walk, do a couple exercises. Um, a lot of people say they don't have time for a hobby or activity. Now is a good, a good time to start thinking about what you'd like to do. Um, and then each time you have a craving, this gives you the opportunity to start working on completing that list. <clears throat> Excuse me. Basically, anything that you can do to better your chances at overcoming a craving, uh, you know, adding any activity, task, or intervention in this step or the process along the way is healthier than using tobacco. Um, even if you gain weight, as many people are fearful of, you know, especially during the holiday season, you know, gaining 15, 20, 25 pounds is not uncommon for someone who's trying to quit using tobacco. Um, but keep in mind that the adverse effects of tobacco on the body far outweigh any added weight gain. And you can always focus on losing that weight once you've quit, as most people see a positive increase in their energy level, uh, their quality of sleep, improvements in their breathing, which allows them all to become more active. Uh, there's also additional methods, um, such as behavioral modifications, breaking routines that can be utilized to provide an additional increase in achieving a successful quit attempt. Um, most tobacco users, we all know we have specific triggers or routines which spark a craving, um, even if you just use tobacco, um, especially in the morning, you're getting ready for work, getting ready for you know the day. Um, you wanna get up, you wanna drink that coffee. Uh, it usually goes hand in hand. So riding in the car after meals while relaxing at home, um, drinking coffee or other beverages, you know, alcohol beverages included um, <clears throat> are big triggers. So keeping tobacco products out of reach is essential in limiting our ease of access to tobacco products. And if we create difficulty in their use, it's possible to avoid the craving altogether. Um, basically, as much if you can put as much interventions or tasks or time in between the actual craving and the use of the tobacco, you have a better chance of, of avoiding that tobacco use altogether. Um, so while driving or riding, try putting the tobacco products in the trunk um, behind the seat uh, where it's necessary, where you would actually have to pull over to the side of the road in order to reach them, uh, especially this season. Most people, especially given you know the cold weather that we're experiencing right now, we would rather wait to get to our destination than to make a special trip along the way. So if you, <clears throat> case in point, if you normally smoke, you know, three cigarettes from here to Plattsburgh and then three cigarettes on the way back, um, just by not having the cigarettes next to you or even the chew tin next to you on the way to Plattsburgh will eliminate that one cigarette there and that one cigarette back. And overall, you've just cut two cigarettes out of your, your daily use or two, two dips out of your daily use. Um, the after meal cravings, um, some of the interventions we can use can be curtailed through like cleaning the table, brushing your teeth, doing the dishes, going for a walk, using an after dinner mint, um, et cetera. Um, the possibilities are really endless. It, it comes down to just what your lifestyle will allow, what you have available. Um, if you're at home, if you're able to keep the lighter in the cigarette uh, in separate locations, if you're able to keep the tin of chew, you know, in a separate room upstairs um, where you don't visit, you know, much throughout the night. Um, this will help lead to a greater dif to greater difficulty in actually using the tobacco product, which in turn will decrease the amount of use that you use per day. Um, and as far as while drinking coffee and other beverages, you know, like I mentioned earlier, try changing your hands and this will kind of, you know, sort of confuse your mind. It'll make things not routine and breaking that routine is important in, in regards to obtaining a, a lifestyle that's free of tobacco. Uh, so I know there wasn't much discussion around vaping and um, when it comes to the use of vaping or other use of the e-cigarettes, the decision is still kind of undetermined on whether or not it is less or more damaging than use of tobacco products. Um, what I can say is that the FDA has not given approval for these items to be used for smoking sensation. 
So it's best to stick with what is the known and approved. Um, with that in mind, if an individual is using a vape pen or an e-cigarette and has been successful in quitting the use of tobacco products, it's extremely important to discuss this with your provider as the side effects of using those products um, have not really been fully established yet. So keep in mind, not all tobacco users are created equal. Um, so what works for someone, one person may not work for another. Uh, typically the average number of quit attempts by an individual is seven. So whether this is your first attempt or your 100th attempt, it's important to know that should you find yourself having difficulty, don't see it as being unsuccessful, but rather learn what has helped you to overcome the cravings that you were able to deal with as it will better your chances of success the next time you try. Uh, remember, you can do this, it is possible, and with dedication, perseverance, and a personalized treatment plan, success can be obtained. So good luck and thank you, and I hope everybody has a happy holiday season. Troy, that was amazing. I always learn something new when I hear you talk about, uh, you know, tips for uh, for quitting. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, I do just want to call everyone's attention to the chat box uh, where there is uh, some information about local resources. Troy is just one of um, a number of tobacco certified tobacco treatment specialists around the North Country. And uh, so check out the chat box uh, to get information about how to connect with uh, people like Troy um, and other, there are other resources out there in the community as well. Um, so in, in addition to the local support that we have, um, we also have a great resource um, that's made available to us statewide. Um, and that's the support that comes through the New York State um, uh, New York State, <laughs> New York State Smokers Quit Line. So next, I'd like to introduce Pat Bax, who is the Marketing and Outreach Coordinator um, at uh, Roswell Park Cessation Services and the New York State Smokers Quit Line. Um, Pat is going to be speaking with Darlene Drake, who is a, a former Quit Coach uh, and current Operations Manager for the the Quit Line. Pat is celebrating 16 years and Darlene 15 years at Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer uh, Center, uh, which is the organization that administers the quit line. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to um, Pat and Darlene. Thank you so much, Anne. It's a pleasure and honor to be here with such a distinguished panel. So thank you for including us. We've been sitting for a few minutes, so I'd like to start off with a little physical activity. It's completely optional. And I'd like you to raise your right hand up in the air, give yourself a little stretch, and then your left hand, and then reach behind your head and give yourself a pat on the back. My name is Pat Bax, and whenever thinking of quitting, just give yourself a pat on the back and say, I can do this. So even though if your name isn't Pat Bax, it's okay. Just give yourself that pat on the back. So if you're thinking about quitting, if you're ready to quit, if you have quit, we are here through the New York State Smokers Quit Line to assist you. And I'm here with my partner, Darlene Drake, who's going to be talking to you specifically about what happens when you actually contact the quit line. So on the next slide, I want to really start off by reinforcing the messaging from Troy and Dr. Deuce who talked about your decision to quit tobacco is a courageous step and the importance of framing it in a positive light. This is not punitive. This is the best thing that you can do for yourself and your loved ones. You are empowering yourself. You are taking back that control that the cigarettes took from you. So you're getting that control right back and you're embarking on a very powerful reflective journey because you're going to discover so many positive things about yourself. And remember each day and each success that you have in the quit process is something to celebrate. And that's important to remember because celebration will help fill that void of taking the cigarettes out of your life. You're making a meaningful change and you are not alone on this change journey. As Dr. Dew said, change is something we're all experiencing more than probably want to be doing right now in 2020, but we are doing it, we are surviving and we're learning to be resilient. So keep in mind that you are on this journey with millions of other people that are making that quit attempt. 
And we are your cheerleaders. We're all here to be part of that team that can help you to be successful in quitting. So on the next slide, let's talk a little bit about who we are through the New York State Smokers Quit Line. As Ann said, we are based at Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center in Buffalo, New York. And we are covering the entire state. So even though we're located in Buffalo, we cover all services across the state. So on our next slide, you can see that we offer a variety of services. We can offer up to three sessions, coaching sessions. Troy and Dr. Deuce talked about that physical addiction, but also the behavioral, behavioral addiction. And that's really important to remember. It's one thing to address the physical addiction, which we're able to do at the quit line, but also looking at the whole picture and recognizing those behaviors that are reinforcing that continuation of smoking and how do we break those triggers? And we'll have Darlene talk about that a little bit more. So when you contact the quit line, we can offer up to three coaching sessions along with helping to screen to see if you would qualify for what we call nicotine replacement therapy. And we service tobacco users, which would be smokers, our traditional smokers, and also what we call ENDS users, which means electronic nicotine delivery system users. You can call us as many times as you want. Sometimes people call us because they're just having a bad day and they wanna call and just talk with someone. We are offering free, keep that in mind, free nicotine replacement therapy. Troy mentioned, let's go with what works. We have evidence to show that patches, gum, lozenges, what we're able to offer through the quit line, those are evidence-based strategies that have helped people to quit and will help you as well. We have self-help materials that are available at nysmokefree.com. And we're gonna take a look at what those are and how they can supplement the physical addiction and addressing that component of it. And Anne mentioned there's so many great resources locally and that are available to you. Keep in mind that some people can quit with minimal resources, other people take more resources. And we have those available to you. You can find them on our website and I'll show you where that is in just a moment. Also, talking with your healthcare provider is very important, as well as accessing benefits that you may receive through your health plan. The quit line is looked at a starter kit. We can provide you with that launch, that initial step, those initial steps, and then your provider, and also your health plan and the community resources can take you to that next level. It's really important to remember that all these resources are available and you are not alone. On the next slide, I am thrilled to mention, we are currently conducting a free three month, up to three month giveaway of free nicotine replacement therapy gum. We had a generous donation from a company called Roe, and that is three months that we can give you to help you with your cravings. Keep in mind, and, and we'll hear a little bit more about this, about combination therapy, but the gum can be that, that really important nicotine replacement therapy that can help you with those short or long-term cravings. So please call us and I'll show you our number and where well, you can see our number right there, 1-866-NY-QUITS. And on the next page, you'll see if you go to nysmokefree.com, you can click on that little icon there that says, get my gum. And you can find out more how easy it is to get that. We do ask you also, if you know someone, maybe you smoke with a few people, please spread the word, tell them about this. This is a time limited offer. And we wanna make sure that the nicotine replacement therapy that we have available to give you free reaches those that need it the most, especially during these very difficult times when some people may have lost their insurance or lost their jobs. On the next slide, I wanna show you a little bit more about what you can find at our website. If you go to nysmokefree.com, you'll see that we have 
plethora of information on quitting tobacco use. If you're thinking about it, you're not quite ready to make that quit attempt, please take a look at our information and read through the information we have available to you. Staying quit, facts and frequently asked questions and tools and resources. And let's break that down on the next slide. You'll see the different subsections that are on our website, nysmokefree.com. There's information about staying quit. You know, Troy mentioned about sometimes people don't want to quit because they're afraid to gain weight. Managing weight, how do you do that when you're in the quit process? Questions about e-cigarettes. We also have information about COVID, which is really important for a lot of people. What we're finding is that COVID is prompting people to make that quit attempt. And as Dr. Dew said, what better time than right now to make that behavior change and to break your addiction to nicotine. And then tools and resources. We have information about healthcare benefits, local research, resources, print materials, videos, and the ever popular savings calculator. When you sit down and you really calculate, how much am I actually spending, not only on the cigarettes or the tobacco products, but getting my car cleaned, getting my teeth cleaned, cleaning the house if I smoke in the house, cleaning my clothes if I have to get my coat clean because it smells like tobacco. So those are the things that we have to look at. And everybody is prompted to quit by different reasons. And for more information on that, I'm going to turn it over to Darlene to talk to you about what happens in an actual coaching session. Darlene? Thank you very much, Pat. Next slide for me, please. What I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about, guys, is what happens when you contact the quit line. Um, keep in mind that I'm also a recovering smoker myself. Took seven tries to get it right. But when you contact the quit line, you're going to go through a 10 to 15 minute phone interview. In this interview, we're going to try to assess your motivation. See your level of readiness. Check your level of confidence. Those three, three things there is very important when you're ready to start your quit. We help you assess that and figure out how best to get started. We help you identify your triggers, which are basically your behaviors and habits of smoking. Once we help you identify those, we'll also ask you to pick a 30, within 30 days, a quit date from the day you first contact the quit line. Once we've picked your quit date, we try to set up a quit plan with you. And the quit plan will be based upon your motivation, your readiness, your, comp your confidence level. Some people, when they call, aren't quite ready to quit. We're not there to say, you got to do it now. We're there to say, okay, so you're not ready. How about we start practicing at it? I found more people move into readiness when they realize that they can practice at quitting. For example, delaying it, as Troy was saying earlier, looking at your routines with it, trying to switch it around a little bit, switch up the habit from the left hand to the right hand. Those things really are important when you're trying to break an old routine or an old habit. We help you identify those. Once we've helped you identify this and pick a quit date and personalize your quit plan, because each quit plan is different for each person. We also encourage you to do continuous coaching and support with us by calling in and asking questions. If you find you're having a hard moment, don't sit there and dwell on that moment. Pick the phone up and call us. The quicker we can get you to move past the thought, the quicker we can get you to move on. Also keep in mind, we have text messaging available. We can send you text messages to help you. And all of these things are, are, are great when you put them together to help you quit. But please remember, the patch, gum, and lozenge, great way to go to get you going. The coaching and support is just icing on the cake. Take advantage of the program. It's free to you. Next slide. We ask that you please keep in mind that change is a process. It's not an event. As I said, it took me seven tries. With each fail attempt, the next one I started, I had a little more knowledge on what I needed to do. 
Keep in mind the quit line has a group of cheerleaders there just waiting to cheer you on and help you make this work. Congratulations on deciding today. Pat, I'll give it back to you now. Okay, thank you, Darlene, for being one of our best cheerleaders. And on the next slide, we have our contact information. If you do have questions, please put them in the chat box. We'll be happy to respond to those. And then on the next slide, you're gonna see that you can email Darlene or myself. If you are a healthcare professional and you're on this call today, please don't hesitate to reach out. We have a very specific referral program that's been very successful. We've been doing it since 2004 and we're happy to help you. And I can explain all the ways that you can refer your patients as well. So thank you. And on behalf of the quit line, please contact us. We're open nine to nine during the week, nine to five on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We also have different languages available. Don't hesitate to call. Welcome to the journey of becoming and staying tobacco free. Thank you. Excellent, Pat and Darlene, thank you so much. Again, just a, a wealth of information. And I, and I just wanna emphasize um, to our you know, participants today that these are services that are made available to all of us at no cost. So um, please take advantage. Um, and if you have any questions, again, post those in the chat. Uh, or, you know, stick around. Pat and Darlene and all the speakers will be, um, you know, spending a little bit of time after the presentations to talk more with you um, about your, your questions and concerns. Um, so Pat and Troy and Dr. Deuce all talked about um, the importance of working with your healthcare provider um, as you start down the road to um, becoming tobacco free. And, and, and a big part of that is um, just really understanding the, um, how the, the, the medications that are available to help. Um, for anyone that's tried to quit in the past and they've, you know, they've tried a patch or they've tried some gum and they felt like it didn't work. I want to encourage you to kind of, you know, just put that aside because there has been so much progress made in um, understanding how to use these medications. And, and it's not just about using the patch or using the gum. Oftentimes it's about using these medications and, and others in combination. Um, and they just, they, they absolutely double your chances of being successful. So to talk with us a little bit about these medications, I'd like to introduce Stephanie Leffler. Uh, Stephanie is a, an advanced practice practitioner at Alice Hyde Medical Center and one of our um, biggest uh, uh, tobacco champions. So um, thank you so much for being here, Stephanie. I'm going to turn it over to you. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to be here and to be part of this um, expert panel. This has been great. Uh, all of the discussions are just fantastic. Don't you agree? Um, Every day uh, in practice, I've been practicing for 20 years in primary care here, and every day I'm, help, I'm trying to help people quit smoking and uh, get to their, to their targets. And my job in primary care is to prevent people from getting to see Dr. Deuce. Uh, I think we can keep him busy enough with other things, and if we could reduce the amount of lung cancers, that's, that's the goal. That's the ultimate goal here. Um, today, I want to give you a few uh, descriptions of what's available for medications. Um, I, have, I have a lot to share with you, but I think you're going to find this interesting and, and like, uh, like what you hear. Uh, next slide, we will take a look. Uh, you can, oh, next slide. Uh, I will say I have no disclosures. I'll talk to you about several medications today, but I am not paid by any pharmaceutical company or company um, to support their products. Um, this chart compares the drug to the placebo, and it shows how effective medications and uh, the nicotine replacement systems can be at helping a person to quit smoking. So many of these show at least a 50% a, a improvement over the placebo or using uh, nothing as compared to using the nicotine patch, uh, nicotine systems, and some of the medications that we have. What's not included on this chart are the combination therapies. So 
we've come to know that using the nicoderm or nicotine patch with a, a pill form or even another type of nicotine can actually improve the success rate by over 50%. Um, so we can talk about that as well. And um, the next slide, uh, we have several options on the market. Some are over the counter, which are mean are without a prescription, and some are with prescription at this time. All have been around for over 10 years, so we have really good safety data on all of these um, uh, formulas. The uh, nicotine replacement therapy is available in many doses and many forms. Um, the top one is the nic nicotine patch, and that is a 24-hour patch that is applied to the skin for 24 hours. It's well tolerated. And so what it does is it releases nicotine into the bloodstream at a steady state for about 24 hours. When you have a cigarette, it the nicotine is rapidly absorbed through the lungs and goes directly to the brain, and it gives you a buzz. It gives you a stimulation. Usually, it's related to the hormone dopamine, which um, makes us feel really good. And uh, when you use nicotine, that nicotine goes and attaches to those brain receptors as well. But as the patch is delivered, it's slow in delivering and it's steady state over 24 hours. So it doesn't typically give us that buzz that a cigarette would give you. The other options are a little bit more shorter acting and can give you um, similar effects as a, as a cigarette would. And so, it can uh, reduce your stress as what we usually see with smoking. The patch is available in three doses, 21 milligrams, 14 milligrams, and seven milligrams. And on average, if you smoke more than 11 cigarettes per day, you want to use a 21 milligram patch every day for, and, and the time amount varies. Um, our idea is that we can get you to reduce your smoking so that as you feel comfortable, two weeks, maybe four weeks, you're going to step down to the lower dose patch of 14 milligrams. And as that goes, you can also reduce down to the seven milligrams. And this sort of gives you a weaning process off the nicotine. And um, the, the big side effect with the nicotine patch is it can be insomnia. So we do, you can take the patch off just before bedtime. It's a nice trick uh, if you are suffering from insomnia with this, uh, with this method. And uh, it's important to have a realistic understanding that um, not to expect that uh, nicotine buzz or that dopamine rush that you get when you have a cigarette when you use the patch. But you can also add other options with the uh, patch. And if you go to the next slide, we can see that the, the gum, the lozenge, the inhaler, and the nasal spray are shorter acting. And these are great for breakthrough cravings. I also tell my patients to use these even before they would experience a craving. So if you're in a situation where it's a trigger to have a cigarette, perhaps it's after a meal, perhaps it's in a social situation with friends who are smoking and you feel like you might have the craving, it's a typical situation for you to have the craving, it's a good idea to use one of these shorter acting substances um, as a replacement to decrease your, your um, risk of uh, craving or relapsing to have a cigarette. 
one thing you'll want to think about when you have when you use the gum. So the gum is available in two doses of four milligrams and a two milligrams. And um, one thing you want to think about when using the gum is chew it for a few minutes until you get a zing in your mouth. Some people call it a peppery taste. And once you get to that point, you'll want to pocket it between um, the cheek and the gum. We call it parking it for about five minutes. And then you can chew it again until you get the zing or the peppery taste and then park it again for five minutes. You'll want to do that for about 30 minutes and then you can throw away your gum. And this allows you to uh, bring that gum into the space um, where it's easily absorbed through the mucous membranes of the mouth. Now using the lozenge, it's a little bit different than the gum in that it seems to be more rapidly absorbed. It's a faster rate of delivery than the gum. And again, this is also, uh, the lozenge comes in two doses, two milligrams and four milligrams. It comes in two sizes. Uh, one is a wafer and one is a mini lozenge. And you want to park those two between the gum and the, uh, the cheek. Um, and this slowly releases the nicotine over about 20 to 30 minutes. And then you want to get rid of the lozenge. It's important not to swallow um, the gum or the lozenge. Otherwise, that will increase the risk of nausea, which can be a side effect with these medicines. And um, you try not to use um, uh, acidity drinks while you're using the, um, and that could be uh, orange juice, uh, citrus juices, um, things like that when you're using these medications that really does reduce the absorption and the effectiveness of this. Then there's also the inhaler, which can simulate uh, actually smoking a cigarette. Um, do this for me now, please. Everybody take a deep breath in through the nose and then out through the mouth. So that that inhale, that exhale is also part of what we get out of the relaxation response when a person has a cigarette. Um, that's still important to do when you're trying to quit smoking is the deep breathing. That's a behavior that can help you be more successful. The inhaler itself is very dependent on you inhaling it. It's a very small uh, cylindrical um, device that requires that you puff on it several times. And again, the nicotine is delivered through the, um, through the uh, membranes of the lungs. And the last thing is the nasal spray. So the nasal spray um, is, is uh, absorbed through the nasal mucosa and the, the mucous membranes of the nose. When you use the nasal spray, you do want to point it toward the nasal septum, and that's where the nicotine is uh, absorbed. For the nicotine replacement therapy, we do recommend a treatment minimum of about 12 weeks, um, give or take, and you can also work with your healthcare provider uh, when you're trying to quit smoking to give you uh, advice and also work with your healthcare team call the uh, tobacco cessation quit line, tap into the resources of the coaching. You know, truly this is a, is a very, um, it can be a very difficult endeavor, um, but it's probably the most important thing that you can do for your healthcare. And if we go to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about two other prescriptions that are pretty popular. Um, to help you quit smoking. And the first one is Wellbutrin. It also goes by the brand names Wellbutrin and Zyban. These have been available a very long time in the United States, since about 1985. Originally was um, on the market and 
uh, used for depression and in higher doses, we still use it today for depression. It allows a sense of well-being when you're trying to quit. It can also mitigate the weight gain associated with quitting smoking. It is uh, not recommended for those who have a seizure disorder. And this medication is taken typically twice a day. And side effects include nausea, um, sometimes insomnia, or it can be very activating. But that often can be reduced by taking it earlier in the day. And the next one is the varenicline. It's, um, this one is, goes by the brand name of Chantix, and it's been approved for use since 2006. So again, we've had 14 years of data with this medication. We know that it's really quite safe and it's well tolerated. There's no significant medication interactions but there have been some warnings on the label about depression and potentially increasing suicidal activity. But it's important to talk to your healthcare provider because each case is very unique and this may be a very good medication for you. Um, it is a pill. It works by going to the brain and connecting with the nicotine receptors. It actually blocks the nicotine receptors like a ball and a catcher mitt. And these are the same receptors that nicotine binds to. So when you take this medication and you smoke, then the cigarette really loses its zing. It's, it loses its uh, effectiveness because the varenicline, this medication, is already attached to its receptors. So it's, um, it's very well tolerated. Um, biggest side effects, about 29% of people experience nausea. And in my practice, sometimes we'll reduce the dose of it or ask people to take it with medications to reduce the nausea. About 10% of people have insomnia or very abnormal dreams or active dreams. Um, many times that's, that's quite well tolerated. It's, um, four times more, you're four times more likely to quit smoking using varenicline, um, than placebo or nothing at all by six months and two times still effective at remaining smoke-free at 12 months versus not using any medications at all. So if we can go to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about combination therapy, which can be really effective at helping you quit smoking. Um, some examples are using the Nicoderm patch, which is a 24-hour patch with either the gum, the inhaler, the nasal spray, or the lozenge. But also we can pair up the Wellbutrin or Bupropion with the Nicoderm uh, replacement therapies as well. So whether you go it alone, whether you tap into your coach or speak with your healthcare provider about this, there's a lot of tools out there to help you be successful in quitting smoking. And uh, just tap into those uh, healthcare team members to help you. Um, I wish you a lot of luck and um, much happiness as we close uh, 2020 and go into 2021. Stephanie, thank you so much. Um, lots of really great information about the um, medications that, um, that we have uh, access to. And just a little side note that most of these medications are covered by insurance and um, and you know where they're not, especially the nicotine replacement therapies. Again, we have access to free supply through the New York State Smokers Quit Line, um, and the Heart Network also has uh, supplies that uh, we make available through our tobacco treatment network. So, um, 
lots of, again, you know, lots of uh, support out there. So thank you. Um, I just, you know, finally would like to turn it over to Katrina Kraft. Um, Katrina has taken advantage of, um, I believe, all of these resources at one time or another. Um, and so um, she's going to talk with us about her experience. Um, just share quickly why she remains committed to continuing to be a tobacco-free, um, tobacco-free. So Katrina. Hi, um, just, I have to say this is very ironic. We just had this discussion probably about a week ago. My husband decided it was time for him to quit smoking. And as Pat was talking about the stuff that you guys have to help out, I had a FedEx guy delivering me a package in the mail and it just so happens it's only been three days and here is his stuff for him to start quit smoking i thought it was quite ironic i am sitting here waiting to speak and here's his medication to help him and he's been smoking even longer than i have and he smokes two packs of cigarettes a day and i'm so excited for him to quit because now that I have quit and he has quit, I am going to cry because I'm happy, you know. Um, now, to start it off, I started trying to quit smoking in 2014. Troy could attest to that before my first open heart surgery. I had a mechanical valve put in my aortic opening. And I was smoke-free, Troy, what, about a year and a half, and I relapsed. And I ended up having another open-heart surgery. Um, and I did quit smoking again, but by the grace of God, I did. And with all the help that Troy and the hospital and nurses and them have all given me, I have been able to stay smoke-free. And this is because I have grandchildren. I have family. They are my inspiration, my friends, my family, and Troy, I made a really good friend in him since I stopped smoking. It, keep smiling over there because you made me proud. You should be proud. You did very well by me, but um, anyway, I did have a lot of problems. I mean, I gained weight excessively because I quit smoking. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it. I then started exercising to lose my weight. But um, I tried Troy's techniques, putting the cigarettes in the car, moving the cigarettes in a different room, the little tasks that I started crocheting just to keep my fingers going and keep them moving. I started quilting to help keep my fingers going, to keep them moving, to stop me from eating the second time around. Um, I actually was able to get my health back together when I quit smoking enough to be able to work. I can actually work a full-time job and I can breathe when I'm walking, and Troy, I'll tell you, I see him when I'm working. I'm constantly around the store. I work at Walmart, and I run around that store like a chicken with my head cut off, which as of two years ago, I would not have been able to walk past that store without a wheelchair car. And it means a lot to me because I have a two-year-old granddaughter, a 12-year-old granddaughter, and they're my life. They're my world. They're my everything. And I can't thank them enough for letting me quit smoking. People don't understand what it is to have meaning to have a second chance at life, to have your second chance at life. I have had too many family members I lost to cancer on my father's side of family, and I don't want to go that way. I've seen too many tragedies. 
And this is, I want to stay smoke-free. I want to be happy. I want to live and be able to watch my grandchildren grow up. I just want to be there for them. And I'm so much happier now. My life is richer. And I don't mean materialistically. I just mean healthy. I can breathe, obviously. It's just, it's been amazing. I just, I'm just so much happier. And I appreciate all your comments. And if you guys will understand someday when you get to this bridge and you can cross it, you're going to be amazed by how much progress you have made and how happy, much happier you are. You can go into a doctor's office and you don't hear them say to you, oh, how much did you smoke today? I can smell it on your clothing or how much, you know, you just get, you don't have people looking at you differently now, knowing that you, you don't smell like cigarette smoke. You don't smell like an ashtray. It's just, it's the most amazing feeling. You, no one understands until you get there. But you are going to fail, probably. I did. I failed more than once. I can honestly say that. And I just, with all my support I've had, I've been there. I've tried to eat fruits and vegetables. I tried to eat less portions on my meals. And if I found out that I was wanting a cigarette, like I said, I would pick up my crocheting. I would crochet for a couple minutes. I would get up and go for a walk. I would take my dogs out and wrestle with them. I'd play with them. I just did so much and I'm thankful. I'm grateful. And these guys have been amazing to me through everything. And I'm hoping I can be an inspiration to my husband because I really want to keep him too. I want to keep him around with me as long as I can. And I'm sorry for crying. I just, it means a lot to me. Katrina, you don't, to... you don't need to apologize. And I just have to, I don't know if you can see the messages in the chat, but um, you've inspired, you've just inspired all of us with your story. Um, I can't I thank you enough it. for sharing that. Thank you. Congratulations and keep going. <laughs> That's Thank fantastic. You. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't even apologize. Nope. It's a beautiful but, thing. And then to see that come today, it was funny because here I am just sitting here and all of a sudden as Pat was talking, the UPS was dropping this package off to me and this is the letter I got with all the information on it. So it's going to help him get up able to keep him because my husband had a massive heart attack in 2013 and I've been fighting with him to quit with me. And it's, I get the shakes. I'm so scared. I'm mm -hmm. such a nervous wreck right now, but yeah, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm in awe because I couldn't believe it. And it's only been three days since I called to get him his package, and it's here. Just so everyone sees. It is real. They do come. They do help you out. And I literally just got it today in the mail. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's Great. why I kept giggling when you guys were talking, when Pat was talking I kept giggling because I couldn't believe that that was, it was just ironic that that had just happened to pop up when Pat was talking <laughs> about all the resources and the help. Right. We planned it that way, Katrina, to help you celebrate <laughs> your success. It was all planned. We worked it out with the delivery guy. <laughs> That's nice. All right. Well, uh, we're going to. We're, we're going to transition here into a, a little bit more discussion. Um, so uh, Katrina, thank you. Please don't leave um, because I think, you know, we're all very, um, we, what a great story. We're th so thankful that you shared that. 
Um, for anyone that needs to hop off, uh, please take a look in the chat box and take our quick little survey. It's just a two minutes at the most. Um, just click on that link and um, answer a few questions for us. If you have questions that you're not wanting to ask on the chat um, or you know, in person, you can ask your question on the survey and we'll have someone follow up with you. And, um, and so with that, I'm gonna open up the floor and uh, you know, just have people start it. Is there any that want um, any anything that people want to talk about? Thank you, Katrina. That was really great. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. And like I said, I appreciate everything. All the help that you guys have done for me has been amazing. I, I just couldn't have done it without everybody. I just want to say congratulations, Katrina and. You're going to you're going to be the best motivation for your husband. So proud of you. Thank you. All right, does anyone have any questions for any of our our speakers? All right. Well, going once. Please take our survey, ask a question there if you're too shy to ask um, online here. I know it's intimidating, or it can be. So going twice. I probably should have been in radio because I don't like dead air. I don't like it when it's quiet, so I have to start talking. And Dana's laughing at me because she knows there's a backstory there. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, if if that's it, I again, I just I I, I really want to thank everyone for being here, um, for taking the time to come and you know hear a little bit more about the resources that we have available to us. Um, we're just very fortunate. I want to thank the again the planning committee um, and especially um, CVPH for. Um, giving us the inspiration to do the program and to be part of the community lecture series to Dana Isabella with the Champlain Valley Family Services, who's been the master Zoom coordinator behind the scenes um, and to all of the speakers. You've been great, uh, lots of really good information and uh, there, this has been recorded. And so I believe that CVPH will be posting it on their website um, in the community lecture series section. Um, of their website. Uh, and I don't, uh, maybe I'll turn it to Penny. Is there, I'm probably not describing that accurately. Penny, can you tell us where that will be posted on your website? Put her on the spot. Oh, there it is. Dana just put it in the, um, in the chat box. So, all right. 